Coming to you from Jezero Crater on the surface of Mars, this is Mr. C. I just turned it on. Seventh graders, welcome to Tuesday's Science, and I missed this six days ago on May 4th, where on May 4th, a lot of people, especially Star Wars people, will greet each other with, May the 4th be with you, and it's a play Man, I can barely get that helmet on. It's a play on words from May the Force Be With You from Star Wars, right? So anyway, hey, I have good news for you. If you're a believer, if you ask Jesus in your life, you've got the Force with you. You've got the ultimate Force with you. You have Jesus living inside you and His power. His power leading you, guiding you, protecting you, and loving on you. So, we've got the force. The real force. That would be Jesus. Okay, I will never leave you or forsake you, he said. So, he's going to um, take us all the way to heaven. So, good on him. Thank you, Lord. So, anyway, I have a lot to cover today. And, if you'll take out your study guide... Mr. C, are you going to show us a roller coaster? I am. I'm taking you to Toronto, Canada. And I don't know if you've heard of Leviathan. You see it there? Number six, Leviathan, Toronto, Canada. 306 feet high. It looks like 92 miles an hour. So you're going to rip. And Newton's law is going to be, first law, is going to be in play. And that's why you ain't getting me on a roller coaster. I don't want to be going real fast that way, and my body still wants to keep going that way, even though the roller coaster has totally changed direction. So, no thank you. So, let's just see, you are a chicken. When it comes to riding roller coasters, yes. So, what have, what's the roller coaster I've ridden? I have ridden... What is the roller coaster over at California Adventure? I can't remember the name of it. I've been on that a few times. So, and I tried on it. You know how it does a loop? So I told people around me, I'm going to think really hard, really positive, and try to not have it loop. But it did every time. It still went, it still looped. So, Mr. C, come on. So, just playing around, having fun. So anyway, but I ain't getting on no roller coaster. So, and the other reason is, I don't want my body trying to keep going that direction at the same speed. And then the other thing is, I don't want the roller coaster to reveal my stomach contents to all those around me. That would kind of stink, wouldn't it? I mean, you know, think about it, literally. You know what I mean? You're riding with someone and they toss their cookies. So hopefully not on you. Mr. C, could we move on? It's close to lunchtime for some of you. Sorry. Okay, so we have... Oh, I almost forgot. I remembered. I've got to show you this. Here it is. In your study guide. You have 10 SSRs that are due on Friday. Many of you have turned them in already. Okay, why do I have you do them? Because I want you to appreciate what God gives you every day, big and little things. You know, you could start with, you know, like breath. You woke up this morning. That's kind of a good thing. That's sort of a big deal, a biggie. You've got neat parents who love you, care for you. So, and your friends. And the Lord. You got the Lord on your side in your corner, as they say. So, anyway, 10 SSRs. Some of my SSRs over the last few weeks. Um, let's see. I've had some, I'll start at the top, really good conversations with good friends, and they tell me they're praying for me, which is the best thing they can tell me. Hey, hey, Craig, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you. Doesn't get any better than that. That's a big SSR. Okay. 
and um, um, I've had family members say, love you, Dad, or <laughs> my wife, love you, Craig. So, hey, does it get much better than that? That's pretty, pretty awesome SSR. Um, I've had some really good walks. You know, I'm a nature lover. I'm a naturalist. I've seen and heard quail every day on my walks and all kinds of other birds. Um, it's been cool early in the morning when I go walking at 530 in the morning. The other day I had two ducks. I think it was mom and dad wander across in front of me. Didn't even pay any attention to me. They were just right there like 15 feet away. You know, waddle, 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 waddle. It was very cool. So I don't think I've ever had ducks waddle across my path when I was running or walking any time in the past. So that was, that was kind of cool. So um, let's see. On the eating front, I've had some really good lasagna and chicken parmesan from Olive Garden. I love their salad and their salad dressing. It's my favorite salad dressing. So we had that for Mother's Day for my wife and for my daughter. And then we got a cheesecake, a devil's food cheesecake. That's chocolate, right? A chocolatey cheesecake. Doesn't get much chocolatier than this. From New York City. New York City! So, and it was from a restaurant called Junior's. If any of you have ever been in New York and downtown New York and maybe gone to some plays on Broadway, perhaps you've eaten at Junior's. Perhaps you've had their Devil's Food Cheesecake. We actually are going to have a little bit more tonight. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. An SSR. Why does God give them to you? To enjoy. He is a good God, isn't he? And our response... Thank you, Lord. Anyway, get those SSRs done, all right? So, how are we doing time-wise? Pretty good. Okay, I want to make sure that I don't miss anything. So, you guys have a quiz on Friday. It's going to be on Newton's Laws. Um, and it's going to be on a new topic that I tell you about tomorrow. Short quiz, maybe 15 points. Last quiz or test? That's it. That's it, baby, in eighth grade. This is it. So anyway, you might want to prep a bit. You might want to triple R. Your homework tonight is keep studying your study guide. And then I want to tell you about a topic. I better tell you now or I'll forget. You did some reading, hopefully, and, and some um, bullet facts about super lubricity. And what was it? It was a substance that is a super lubricant. It reduces friction to the max. It reduces friction so that the two surfaces rub over each other um, so easily. I wanted to read you just a little bit about it. Um, and here's what it said. There's a substance that doesn't play by the rules of friction. You might be surprised to know it is, and I have a chunk of it. Here it is. It is, turn it around this way, graphite. Graphite. Those of you who had me in seventh grade for our mystery minerals last year, graphite was one of the minerals. You, you rub it with your fingers and it feels very, very smooth. Well, it's a friction reducer. Here's what else it says. It's the same material that's found in your pencils. Do you remember that? And it has a quality called super lubricity. When two pieces of graphite slide across each other, if the layers are properly arranged, friction almost disappears. That's not possible. Well, it doesn't totally disappear, but almost. This property makes graphite an excellent dry lubricant. So, scientists are studying graphite because while they can observe super lubricity, they still can't describe it, how it works. It's mysterious. Does the Lord know exactly what's going on with the atoms? 
You betcha. What doesn't he know? What doesn't Jesus know? Nothing. Knows everything. Everything about everything. That would be called omniscience. Yes, indeed he do. So graphite. Graphite. It's a form of carbon. And it's very fascinating. I'm incredibly fascinated by graphite. Okay, hey, just really quick, I wanted to remind you about the Galileo experiment. And I want to show you this and just very briefly, and I've got to hurry because I've got some cool stuff coming up. We're, you're going to Toronto, Canada and riding Leviathan again. And then I'm going to tell you about another video that you're going to watch. And it's cool, and it will help you if you let it. The speaker will help you if you let the speaker. It's a TED Talk. I'll explain what that is. Oh, TED Talks. I know about TED Talks. Get to them in a minute. So anyway, Galileo experiment. Two objects that have different weight drop from the same height at the same time. Will they fall at the same rate? Will the heavier one fall faster, the lighter one faster? Will they fall at the same rate? same speed. You know the answer already. The problem was different weighted objects. How will they fall? Hypothesis. A lot of people say the heavier one will fall fastest. And that's a good hypothesis on Earth in, on some occasions, especially if the light object is very light in this case. If it were falling, you know, like 100 feet or something, the heavier one would fall faster. But do you remember the story? the Galileo story. Variables control drop from the same height at the same time. Variables are differences. Control means to keep the same. Okay? Mr. C, this was from our scientific method yesterday. Yes, it was. Okay? So, the balls are nearly the same diameter and shape. Okay? Except this one's about one-tenth the mass and weight of the actual baseball. So, um, the one variable not controlled, different weights, one that's not kept the same, and then the diary step, the data, and your data won't be any good. You're going to, if you haven't written this, you've got to have heaps of data or heaps of data like they say in Oz, in Australia, or your conclusion isn't going to be accurate. You need heaps of data. That means lots. Hundreds and hundreds of tests or trials. You do that and your data will be accurate. Now you remember the problem on Earth though. Air, right? The atmosphere. What do you mean problem? We've got to have the atmosphere. We'll suffocate without O2. You're right. You're right. But for this experiment sake, um, you've got to drop the objects in a vacuum where there's no air, no matter. And then it's just gravity, that's the only force, pulling on the objects. And then you're cooking. Yeah, then you're doing it properly. Well, but it, it's hard to actually get a vacuum, to make a vacuum. So, I, I get it. So, in a vacuum, the objects fall at the same speed. So, anyway. Alright, how are we doing? Got to save time for the TED talk um, introduction. Okay. If you will turn to 2468. I think the last thing we did yesterday was Gardner Smarts. And everything on here that I underlined and highlighted, you've got to know. Your homework tonight? Review Newton's Laws. How about you? Did you review Newton's Laws, Mr. C? An object in motion will stay in motion at the same speed in the same direction unless acted upon by a force, like a change in direction of a roller coaster track. It's why I ain't going on no roller coasters. Because of Newton's first law, the law of inertia. An object in motion will tend to keep going at the same speed, even if the roller coaster track changes. Your body will want to keep going that way. I know that's fine. I don't want to go on no roller coaster. 
So there's that. And then the other thing, there's the problem of the roller coaster making you reveal your stomach contents to all those around you. And that wouldn't be pleasant for them or you. You know, you'd hate to just have to apologize to everyone at the end of the roller coaster ride. Hey, I'm sorry for spewing on you. You know, you'd hate that. It just, you know, it would kind of ruin your day. And the people on the roller coaster who are with you. So anyway, uh, page nine. So here you go. Reasons you can trust the Bible. Is it really nine? Did I get it right? Yeah, it is. Reasons you can trust the Bible. How many are you going to ask on the semester exam? Four to six. HAS, see that I underlined them. History, archaeology, science. Fulfilled prophecy. Manuscripts of the 40 writers agree. Inner testimony. Bible changes lives. And God said the Bible is his word. So anyway, look those babies over. And Bible verses. How we doing? Good. Good, good, good. Still have time. Don't forget to introduce the TED Talk. I'll remember. All right. Verses. Okay. Uh, oops. I got ahead of myself, didn't I? So where are those babies? I hope I put them in there. I didn't leave them out, did I? Bible verses? That would not be good. I could have. I'll have to, I might have, oh, there they are. We went over them already. Yeah, that's right. You remember Nick from Genesis 1-3? Nick, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Kind of his recipe for creating stuff. Nothing instantly commanded. Yep. Okay. Uh, do we have time? Yeah, I think we do. All right. The FAA study guide, the flood. Now, I've highlighted pretty much everything I want you to know. Why was there a flood? Man's great sin. We're not surprised by that. Remember what it said in Genesis? It said that it's basically like people got up every day during Noah's time and all they thought about was doing rotten things, evil things. Continually, it says. That's the adverb. Where did the water come from? The sky and the ground. All the fountains of the great deep burst open on one day. So, burst. That sounds kind of violent. Uh, yeah, I'd say. How long did the flood last? I didn't write it down. But it, it rained 40 days and 40 nights. They were on the ark over a year. Who survived? No one, his family, his wife, three sons, three daughters-in-law. That's it. And then how high were the flood waters? Above the highest mountains. Above the highest mountains. 22 and a half feet above the highest mountains. So was it a local or a worldwide flood? Look, if the water was above the highest mountains, it doesn't take a rocket scientist or physicist to say, you know, I think it might have been a global worldwide flood because it covered up the highest. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, worldwide global flood. Who designed it? God, of course. Genesis 6, who built it? No one his family. He might have hired other people to help him build it. That would have been really sad for you to be one of the builders of the ark and you die in the flood. Bet it happened. You know, you got paid to help build it by Noah. But you didn't believe what he said about the flood and believing God and obeying God and not sinning. Bummer. How long did it take to build? Probably 100 years plus. The ark was so many cubits in length. That was the length standard unit for that time. A cubit. C-U-B-I-T. Cubit. Cubit. The ark's dimensions in feet. 510, 85, 51. So you've got that right there. Number 5. 510, 85, 51. That's our very best guess about its length. It could have been longer. 
The whole point was, did God know how big it needed to be? We're pretty sure, though, a cubit was about 20 inches. So, uh, how was it waterproofed? Pitch, which was like tar, a tar substance. How many decks? Uno, dos, tres. Un, deux, trois. Three decks. What, was, what wood was it built of? Gopher wood. What is that? We don't know. What tree? We don't know. It's not a tree we have around today. What was the length to width ratio of the arc? Six times longer than it was wide. Six times longer than it was wide. Who cares? What's so big deal about that? That dimension, six times longer than the width, is an incredible stable design. We've tested that design in wave tanks and you could get waves as high as 100 feet and the arc wouldn't flip. It was stable. It would right itself. It would come back up correctly. Anyway, there's your study guide. A few more pages. So on Wednesday, we'll probably finish that one on Wednesday and then on Thursday get into uh, the second study guide. There's three study guides, remember. You'll get the Second one later in the week, the third one next week. Okay, TED Talk. Raise your hand if you've ever watched a TED Talk. I've watched a bunch of them on YouTube. A TED Talk is where someone who really knows about the topic, has really studied it, and does a really interesting talk. It's usually short. Short talk with the key ideas about that topic. Well, today's TED Talk... I don't even know the name of the person right now who's doing it. Um, but anyway, this TED Talk is about how to practice properly. When you're shooting free throws, do you practice properly? Or your swing in the softball or baseball cage, do you practice right, properly? When you're studying for a test, do you practice properly? This is all about how to practice properly. And what I'd like you to do on the back page, I'd like you to write down two or three tips. There's way more than that. Now, if you want to, you don't have to. It's optional. But two or three tips I'll probably ask you for on the semester exam. Two or three tips about how to practice properly. So how do you do it correctly? There are things you do and things you definitely don't do when you're practicing anything. It's all about how to improve at anything. Some tips. How many do you write down? Two or three. Just bullet facts. Two or three. And we'll discuss that tomorrow. Um, you're, going to, you're going to watch the TED Talk. Mr. Phillip might even stop it at the end a little bit. And you could go over the the tips, how to practice properly, and then you're going to ride Leviathan up in Toronto, Canada. So, hope you hold on to your lunch. I will see you tomorrow on Wednesday, Downhill Day. Mr. Phillip.